Second example for the interpretation of the Pico Dolga, case number two. What kind of situation can we see here? First of all, we have a cardiac index of 7.45. In relation to the normal range of 3, point, uh, 3 to 5, that's pretty high. So we have a hyperdynamic situation without any knowledge why. First of all, high blood flow. So looking at determinants of the blood flow, which is again the preload. Preload is the global anti-solid water volume index, which is kind of low, not dramatically, but it is low. And when we are able to interpret also the stroke volume variation, we see this is in normal range. So assuming the patient is under controlled mechanical ventilation, it seems that this patient does not really require fluid administration. What about the afterload? Systemic vascular resistance index is extremely low. So this patient is under vasodilation, it's peripheral open. What else can we see from the contractility information? Both of these parameters are in the normal range area, so the cardiac function is quite fine. And finally, the lung parameters, extravascular lung water index, we see a value of 22, which is extremely high. So it means in this patient, we have a confirmation that this patient is under pulmonary edema. And when we see pulmonary edema, we should also have a look at the pulmonary vascular permeability index to have an idea why about the origin of the pulmonary edema. And in this case, we have a value of more than six, extremely high. And this means a value of more than three most likely represents a patient under inflammatory response, a patient in ARDS situation. So the conclusion from this results is we have a hyperdynamic situation. It seems that fluid administration is not really beneficial, cardiac function is okay, but we have a severe problem in the lungs. This patient is under pulmonary edema and as confirmed from the PBPI, most likely this patient is an ARDS patient. So what are the treatment options in ARDS? Yeah, we know patients in ARDS are really difficult to treat, but we have several mainly supportive therapy options like, of course, ventilator settings. We can also apply kinetic therapy to the patient, and in also severe cases, we may also apply lung support, an echo machine, for example. And in this case, as the patient is vasodilated, extremely vasodilated, we may also apply vasoconstrictors. And as always, when therapy was applied to the patient, we need to get updates on the derived values, updates on the thermal dilution measurements, and this means we should repeat the thermal dilution measurement after the treatment was applied to the patient. 